If you've watched my previous guide videos on Xenoblade 3, you probably noticed a common trend in my party setup, and that is that I'm always running at least one Signifer. You've likely overheard comments of me talking about how broken it is and showing off some very early strategies with the class. Today we are finally getting into the guide for the class that I consider to be the strongest class in the game, and by a wide margin. And yes, it is indeed a healer class I'm saying this about. In this video we'll be discussing Signifer, talking about all of its strengths and lack of weaknesses, and seeing how to use it most effectively for maximum success in combat. Because there is some broken strats and combinations I want to show off in this video, there will be a couple Chapter 6 relevant story mechanics and classes near the end of the video, but I will give a spoiler warning before that. This is a Chapter 5 class, so hopefully that won't matter too much to anyone watching. As always, if you enjoy my guides, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out a lot and allows me to continue making these videos for you. Let's get into it. The character you use as a Signifer is entirely up to you. There really is not one character who is significantly a better option for the class than anyone else outside of the very funny invincibility strat, in which case Mio would be the best option, so for the sake of simplicity I will be using the class on Mio in the video. Her A rank aptitude means it should be easy to raise her as well. The first art this class has is one of the two central arts for the kit, Oriole. This applies one random buff to yourself. If you want to see the list of buffs you can open up the tip menu under System and it should be there. Not every buff on that list is included in the buffs Oriole can pull, but a good majority are, and this includes many strong effects like a ton of stat boosts, immunity to reactions, faster art recharge, and many others. The art also has a very low cooldown of 3, and with the right setup you can use this art really often. Essentially this allows you to get a lot of buffs in a hurry. Now if this art has any weaknesses, it's the slightly long animations on the art which is really not that much of an issue. The second art is Resonant Flag. This will pass all buffs you currently have to all allies in the party. This art is absurd. Every single buff you pull from the extremely spammable Oriole can be passed to the entire party. This, along with the Talon art, can allow you to just overwhelm enemies with so many buffs that they cannot keep up. It gets absolutely crazy, and anytime I was struggling a bit with a fight near the end of the game or start of the post game before I had everything optimized, I just used this class and it trivialized any issues I had. Being able to pass buffs is absolutely broken. Now there are a couple restrictions. Buffs cannot be reapplied if you already applied them, so you can't just infinitely extend the duration of buffs. Because that would be broken, and Monolith would never put a feature like that into this game. Anyway, the standard talent art for the kit is Cry of Faith. This applies two buffs to the entire party, further increasing the amount of buffs you can stack up with this class in a hurry, and gives you a way to always maintain many buffs at once. A very strong talent art, but it does have a roll action recharge gauge of 6, which may seem high, but honestly with this class it isn't that high at all, and it's pretty easy to use. Heal Harmony is the next art, and this art is a field effect with a cooldown of 3 that will charge up the talent gauge every use, and provide some decent area of effect healing in the field. You can very easily stack multiple of these as well, and with the low cooldown combined with Oriole's low cooldown and Resonant Flag's decent cooldown, you can get a lot of roll actions out in a hurry. These arts also go very well with other ways to recharge arts quickly, and can ensure the class is insanely efficient. Now you may be asking, well what about damage? Well, this class technically does have two other arts, but if you use either, you may as well be trolling. This class does not need damage at all, and these arts will not give roll action recharge. But if you're really curious, we have Illuminate and Spirit of Charge. Both of these arts boost damage depending on how many buffs you have. This is decent, I suppose, but the other three art options are just way too good, and you really cannot afford to pass on any of them, since Heal Harmony is your only technical healing move, and all other heals come from buffs. Speaking of buffs, there are some great master art options for the class. Shadow Eye in particular is a great art to pair up with Resonant Flag because it ensures every time you use this art fusion, it will pass an attack buff to everyone in the party. Also, this works in chain attacks because why wouldn't it? This is extremely strong synergy and ensures your team can hit as hard as possible from the guaranteed attack boost. Advanced Cooldown is another field effect art that gives defense up and more importantly contributes to the talent art gauge by counting as a roll action. This and the short cooldown of 13 seconds make it an absolute essential to run. It seems like this class was designed for you to run this art too, considering this is basically the only other field effect you can even get outside of a damage field, which I'm not sure counts the same, and this class has the default skill that lets you set more than one field effect art. Truly a match made in heaven. The final master art I am using is the only damage art on the entire kit, Cross Impact. When you use Cross Impact, you get Power Charge. Power Charge is a buff effect that increases the damage of your next art by a very significant amount. It will not expire until you use a damage-based art. If you look at our kit here, Cross Impact is our only damage move. So if we use Cross Impact with Power Charge, we get another Power Charge. Therefore, if we always have Power Charge, every time we use Resonant Flag, we will pass Power Charge to the entire party. This works every single time the entire battle once you have Power Charge, 
And yes, it also works in chain attack. The only one exception is if you use your chain attack finisher, which you hopefully should not be doing in most situations. This is such an insanely broken combination, it isn't even funny. If there is anything else you might want to run in this art slot, it would be Solid Stance since you can just randomly pull Power Charge from Oriel or Cry of Faith and then have it the rest of the battle since you have no damage arts. The 25% damage reduction can be nice, but Cross Impact has a far shorter cooldown and thus synergizes with Fusion Arts and cooldown spamming for more buffs a lot better. As such, I think this is easily the best possible setup to run for the class because it allows you to maximize your efficiency as the ultimate support. But wait, there's more. Cry of Faith is certainly a fantastic talent art, but there's another potential talent art you can earn as a master art from the Trobador class, which is also an extremely strong option to use with the class, Glittering Melody. Upon using this art, you will restore all arts for all allies by 100%, so every party member can use their arts instantly again. And furthermore, it inflicts every ally with the pause buff timer buff. And since it's the talent art and not resonant flag, it can reapply the stasis buff every time it's used. Remember when I said that being able to infinitely extend all buff duration is broken? Yeah, that's this art. So now you may be wondering, why would I want to run Cry of Faith over Glittering Melody if I can just freeze every buff? Well, there are two reasons. The first is that this has a recharge of 9, so you may not feel confident you can get the talent art back up again before you need to reapply. Although, if you're optimally using the class, this shouldn't be an issue, and if you need to, your second healer can easily be a troubadour with this talent art to make things easier as well. Secondly, this is more of a ramping ability. Cry of Faith allows you to stack a lot of buffs very quickly into a fight, but Glittering Melody means your party buff stacking will be a bit slower, which can make the early parts of hard fights a little bit more difficult. Cry of Faith also allows you to pull buffs that are based on usage and not duration more often, like power charges, decoys, and reaction nullifies, that will still expire upon use even with the stasis effect of Glittering Melody. Regardless though, this class has two extremely good talent arts to pick from, and I will show both off in this video. The first skill that this class has is Cheer Up Everyone, which restores ally health by half of your healing power every art usage. Now this class has the worst healing power of any healer class by a large margin, I assume as a way to attempt to balance, but regardless this just encourages art spam even further to help keep everyone healthy. I've Got Your Backs will extend buff duration by 50%, a great skill to have even with Glittering Melody set, because this will increase the pause buff duration, giving you a larger buffer for extension. It works very well with the class for this reason. All About Support increases the number of field effects you can equip. As stated when talking about arts, the only other real option for a field effect is Advanced Cooldown, so the game is basically saying that you should use it. And finally, We Can Do Better will restore 5% of health when a buff is applied. A decent tool for more survivability. All around, these skills work well for helping with the class even further as both a healer and ultimate support. The master skills I am running are Dance of Barrages, which gives you a 12% chance to keep an art after using it. Yes, this is RNG and not that high, but it can help with a lot with buff stacking and give you access to more field effects faster too, to build your talent art quicker, and give you more fusion arts if you're lucky. A good skill to consider for sure. Protector's Pride will give you a 50% boost to all recharge when defenders are not targeted, and yes, this affects talent arts too. Signifer is a class that when player control doesn't really need defenders as much, especially with an extremely funny exploit. And this skill is also useful if attacker class AI take aggro to get more buffs quicker and more field effect heals and more talent arts. You might even be able to get away with no defenders if you're on easier difficulties. Once again, another solid option definitely worth considering. Essence of Aether is the obligatory support skill that helps the party further with a damage increase. Another solid option is Capable Hands, which gives you full talent gauge at the start of battle for either instant buffs or the ability to pause buff timer very early on. Other support skills can be considered as well for the entire party, like Swift Song if you aren't running it elsewhere. My gem setup is exactly what you'd expect, boosting both the power and duration of buff effects further. This should be an extremely obvious set of gems to run with the class and should be basically required. My final gem is Life-Saving Expertise for faster revives if something actually does go wrong. A very nice and useful skill to have. My current accessories are Circlet of Enlightenment, not Solus Rings because your healing stat already isn't super amazing, so you won't get as much benefit out of that as the other healers that you're probably running. That helps a bit more with the actual healing part. And honestly, even this might be better replaced with something else. Regardless, having some healing stat boost is still useful to make the class function better as a healer. Devotional Necklace will recharge all arts 100% when reviving an ally, so you can instantly apply all buffs to a revived ally, and also start spamming even more arts if you help with reviving them. A great accessory to have in many situations unless you expect no deaths, in which case this could also be replaced. Fraternal Badge will boost recharge speed even further when a defender is not targeted, because man do I like recharge. And this also affects talent arts too. 
Crystal Earrings are excellent on the class if you're trying to use early chain attacks because of how often you end up using arts, especially useful on normal and easy mode where your chain attacks are not gimped. This class can often carry more offensive teams with only one tank or even without a tank if not on hard mode, and as such you could try changing your team setup around with it. I do recommend at least one other healer though for stronger pure healing since that's the one weakness this class kind of has. Regardless, since buffs can often restore health just fine, you don't really have to worry about it too much. That was a lot, so let's finally get into how to use this class practically and show some very funny examples of how strong this class is. So first off, one thing you can do with this class if an enemy doesn't instantly notice you is kind of set up a little bit in advance, set yourself up with a buff, use all three of your arts, use Oriole again, use Heal Harmony again, and since you are not a defender being targeted, you get really fast art recharge, you'll have Resonant Flag up, and you'll have quite a few buffs to start the battle, and Cry of Faith will already be pre-charged a little bit, which I think is... Uh, Really nice, just as some prep work before the battle officially starts, something to keep in mind. I don't normally fight this super boss because he's kind of a pain just because of the um, visual clarity of being in the water and how big he is. But I did want to show off just Cry of Faith and just show that you can't fight anything with it, really. Because this super boss is one of the more annoying ones I've found. Especially compared to other people. This is on hard mode, of course. And um, essentially all I'm doing is just kind of going through my arts. I'm using a few fusions when I can. You do not have to use fusions, though. In some situations, it may be better not to use fusions, and I'll be able to show that off in this fight as well, because you'll be able to spam more arts faster if you don't use fusions, since you can cancel into your circle arts and go back into your diamond arts from there. You can see right now how many buffs I'm just stacking up absurdly quickly, and this the fight just began really not that long ago. He hasn't really done much of anything to me. I've only got one tank I'm running right now. Really, well, I've got Asher as well, but that's more for the change attack bonus. So... It's still extremely beneficial. Even when someone gets low on health, it doesn't matter too much. Mostly the problem is going to be AoE more than anything. That's kind of the, the situation in a lot of fights. But this class it can give you decoy buffs, which are guaranteed evasion. It can also give you evasion up. It gives defense up. There are so many different things we can get with buffs that'll just help you just annihilate a bunch of fights very, very easily. Like I said, when I was struggling at any point in this game, I could just swap to this class, control it, and there was basically no issues from that point forward. It's really easy to beat up anything with this, if you're player controlling it especially, because you can just stack a bunch of buffs way quicker than AI can. But it's still a great class just to have on AI as well, because they can still use it pretty efficiently, give you a lot of buffs that can be helpful at times. Healing buffs, every kind of buff you can imagine. And we're about to get into the chain attack here in this fight, so I'm going to probably swap perspectives over to the one where I use Glittering Melody instead. So, you don't have to watch this entire chain attack, which it's not important. I'll explain more about how Signifer works in chain attacks in this fight, because I think it'll be more beneficial to show it off here, where you can actually see everything easier. So, I go ahead and start spamming my arts, get every uh, some resources charged up, some buffs on myself, heal harmony to set my fields up, cross impact gives me power charge, so I can now spread that to everyone every time I use resonant flag. So they can hit harder on arts when that happens. And right now, when he's not targeting a defender, you can get extra recharge on everything, which can be helpful. Glittering Melody, too. It counts that. And once I get Glittering Melody, I'll be able to stasis every current buff I have. So I'm going to be taking advantage of that extremely soon here. And now we have the stasis effect on all of our buffs. This also applies to new buffs that you apply after the stasis is already set. So... It'll pause the timer on any new buffs as well while that is still set, so that's really beneficial just to be able to have that effect. And, like I said, it's a bit of a slower start, so you, you could see probably this fight was a little bit harder at the beginning of it, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter too much. Now that, now that we're kind of at this point in the fight, it should be alright. Senna is, has no buffs right now because she's died. I think she's the last person to die in this fight. Hopefully she is at least. From what I remember, so I'm able to cast Resonant Flag on her, and she gets all the buffs back, and she'll be fine from here on out, basically. And we've got some good combos going on right now as well. A lot of accuracy buffs are helping out with that. And overall, we're able to purge in Rage if he had it with that daze. I don't know if he already had it yet or not. I wasn't paying close enough attention. But I checked my interlink levels there to see if we were close to having those able to be activated. And right now, I'm just continuing the buff spam. As you can see, this is hard mode, and it's, it's again, it's higher level than the base level of the enemy. Uh, I don't have him leveled up higher than this, otherwise I could have shown that off, but even then, the fight really would not have been too hard. I'm going to go ahead and activate level 3 Ouroboruses now. 
Or the buffs apply to both Ouroboros forms as well, and you can actually share buffs between Ouroboros. If you, if someone goes Ouroboros form, the buffs they have will be shared with the other person. So that's something that's super beneficial and is going to be extremely strong in some really funny clip I'll show off um, towards the end of this after the chain attack. So I activated these just to see if I could get an easy launch combo off with um, current characters in the party. Enrage is back. Or at least he is enraged now, so he's going to be hitting a little hard now. I end up taking one of those um, attacks there with Mio, but it doesn't matter too much. So I'm still just fine. And once the launch happens, I'm going to go ahead and chain attack here. Because I feel like I should ha easily have the ability to kill at this point. And this class in chain attacks is really absurd as well. Because every single round, you can do some really funny things with it. So we'll start things off with Noah using uh, Strongest Attack. We have the Gimp Chain Attack Ratio, so we only start at 125%, so we're only doing 25% more damage currently. But we can still do a lot here, since we have Asher in the party, who's actually good in Chain Attacks, which is nice. I'll go ahead and use Senna here, so I don't go over 100%. That was all entirely calculated. I knew it was going to be exactly 99. Never had any doubt for a moment. I used Mio there to pass Power Charge to everyone, because she still has it. We have not used that up yet. So, because of that, and because of the fact we get a guaranteed amazing this round, Noah's going to get bonus damage on this finisher here, because of the power charge, it applies to this. And we also get all three characters back because of the amazing, so I'm guaranteed to get Mio back. I can activate Astra's order here, this would give us power charge if we didn't already have it. But since everyone except Noah has it right now, that's really nice. I'm going to finish the round with Noah as well, I'm gonna, so I'm going to be able to use Mio again here, and give him power charge back before he uses his art. And also attack, an attack boost if he needs that. So we're going to hit really hard with this art, even only 233%. Over a million damage with one of those hits of Elimination Beam and the Wild Wave hits that crit did over 200,000. So yeah, this is a really strong strategy. Even on hard mode, you can hurt the enemy a lot. We started this chain attack around half health. He's already like under one-fourth. He's near like one-eighth with only, with only two rounds having been done yet, and we only had, we didn't even have a strong damage ratio yet. So even on hard mode, this can be a really effective strategy for this. Especially if you're running more than two DPS, you can really take advantage of how much extra damage you're getting. So that's something that is super beneficial. We'll have Noah finish it again. Unfortunately, we're not going to get quite over 200% since we had the healer order this round. I would prefer a slightly different order for the chain attack, but it doesn't even matter because Dreadworm Nizunt is already dead at this point. So we have effectively accomplished our goal. Uni has power charge for this attack as well, which would have done a lot. We can't really see the health bar anymore, but you can still see the damage is uh, pretty absurd regardless. And at this point, I go for the Uni tie on finisher because it is the best finisher. I'll probably end the actual chain attack, or in the this, this segment before the actual finisher. I'll just show off the final bit of damage that is directly coming from our funny Signifer class next round. I used Tyon here just to get to 99 bonus, so when Senna attacks here, I can get over 150%. I wish I would have gotten Noah back this round. We could have gotten over 200%, but slightly unlucky there. Not too big of a deal, though, overall. Still able to do plenty. Still able to finish just fine. And now the final round is coming up, like I said. At the end of this round, I will be transitioning to the final clip here, which will have some Chapter 6 stuff in it. So if you do not want to see that, here is your spoiler warning. So just be warned, but I will be showing off a very funny invincibility strat. If you haven't seen it in my other video, it'll be just be a quick overview. Mio applies this power charge and an attack buff to Noah, and we're going to be doing a lot of damage here. Over 800,000 with crits of Wild Wave, over 3 million with that Elimination Beam crit. So this is hard mode, and I only have like a 600% damage ratio. So you can imagine how insane it gets on normal and easy mode. It's really, really strong, so let me show you the final funny strategy you can do with this class now. So one of the main benefits of Mio as a Signifer is that you can share buffs with Noah when you go into Ouroboros form. So if you're able to pause, let's say, an invincibility buff that comes from Lucky 7 at the start of battle, if you have capable hands on both of them, and then you go into this Ouroboros form, you get to share that invincibility buff. I also had Noah as the Seraph class in this video because if he takes damage, that'll grant him Awakening, which is also a buff that you can't get from the power, the, um... Oriole otherwise, which grants a bunch of increased art damage and other bonus effects. So I was able to pass that as well and stasis that as well. And 
At that point, I'm able to take advantage of Noah's Lucky 7. I'm able to not take any damage from the level 200 super boss on hard mode. And we're just kind of able to go ham on him. And everyone is basically invincible. My other four characters are all soul hackers. Tyon died once, which is kind of intended because I have Underworld Rage on all of them. So they get 100% damage bonus from someone dying. And as you can see, I'm constantly kind of swapping to take advantage of Mio. You can see how fast Glittering Melody is charging because we have no defenders in the party. So we're getting the full benefit of recharge here. We also have Miyabi as a Trobador in the party, increasing recharge rates even further. Um, and this is doubly beneficial for both Noah and Mio. I swap to Senna occasionally to take advantage of her strong arts as well. And we are going to destroy level 200 Super Boss on hard and under a minute and 30 seconds, which is absolutely absurd. And it is enabled entirely by how strong and broken Signifer is. Being able to pass invincibility to everyone and being able to just pass Awakening, and just keeping everyone invincible the entire time with the Glittering Melody Cheese. If you want to know more about invincibility, you can check out my video on that, although I showed off a better method of obtaining invincibility in this video than I did in the other video, so... If you know the strategy here, it's a lot easier to get invincibility. Nice 127 time. And honestly, I don't know what else to say. This class is broken in normal play, it's broken in chain attacks, it's broken with cheese strats, there is basically nothing this class cannot do. It is the ultimate support, the ultimate enabler, and in my opinion, it is the best class in the entire game. I really do not see how any other class is stronger than this. It just does basically everything you want it to as a support-based unit, and without basically any damage at all. We're only running cross-impact for the power charge, so that's basically all there is to it. I hope you guys learned something from watching this video and come to appreciate this class more and maybe look forward to using it yourself. And yeah, look forward to future guides. If you enjoyed this one, make sure to subscribe, like, comment if you enjoyed the video and want to see more guides. I will be posting more daily for as long as I can. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Look forward to future videos. Have a wonderful and blessed day. See you soon.